Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much to join tonight's uh, webinar. Welcome. So we, this is the team <laughs> uh, for tonight's workshop. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this is amazing. We have a lot of attendees, uh, so that's great. Uh, to start with, I'm just going to introduce uh, Le Wagon quickly. Well, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm Céline. Um, I'm a community uh, and marketing manager at Le Wagon London. So we are the London team here in front of you. Um, and yeah, maybe you can tell already, but I'm French. <laughs> so excuse my accent. <laughs> I hope everything's going to be clear. So um, just, yeah, so thank you guys. You already know the, the chat. So thank you and hi. So I am going to introduce a little bit Le Wagon. So um, here at Le Wagon, we are a coding school. Uh, we teach uh, technical skills uh, and coding skills to people who would like to maybe change their careers, uh, upskill themselves into, um, into tech, um, to become like product manager developers, or if they want to start um, a startup, for example, that could be a good idea. So we have launched uh, in 2013 in Paris originally, and now we have expanded like a lot. Uh, we are in, uh, we have 38 campuses worldwide, which is pretty amazing. And we have uh, trained more than 7,000 students right now. So we're really glad on the, the journey and what we're doing so far. It's a great community. Everyone is so uh, engaged and, and nice and we just like keep like having conversation with each other even when the batch is finished so that's really awesome uh we are also really proud because we have been ranked uh the first um boot camp um worldwide by a switch up for like uh, four years in a row so that's really great and uh so yeah our students are really a great community and we're having a lot of fun and so it's really really great and hopefully tonight you're gonna love it uh because we have much more to come uh so because of what happening at the moment uh learning to code or learning new skill is a really important thing to do because we have like so much uh, more time than usual and uh, yeah hope you're gonna love it uh, so to start with, I am going to explain a little bit the platform for who uh, has never been on this platform before. So it's Lifestorm. Uh, it's really pretty straightforward and easy to use, I would say. So I just like a couple of rules that you should uh, know before. Um, it's like, uh, so uh, Julio, our teacher, is going to do the workshop tonight. And uh, we have the girls, um, uh, Emma, Lucy, and Anne. They will uh, respond your question. So if you have any question, uh, someone already have a question. <laughs> That's really fast. So if you have a question during the workshop, feel free to use the question tab. So it's really important because uh, then he and the TAs to see your question straight away there. It's really pretty easy for them, so it's better. If there is a question you saw as an attendee and you would like uh, this answer to be answered, you just need to up like it. Then uh, the, the TAs will know that you would like this question to be answered. Uh, hope that's clear. Um, also, don't be scared <laughs> if you miss a little part or if there's something you would like to hear again, you will receive a replay after the workshop of all the workshop and all the session that you will be able to just like watch again. So uh, that would be completely fine if you like missed a bit or if you are like focused on something and you have the feeling like, oh my God, I, I haven't heard that, that, that bit. Don't be afraid, you will have a replay link. So that's all good. Um, and also at the end uh, of the workshop, we will give you access to our platform called Learn. Uh, will you will be able to access uh, and complete some challenges, uh, do some exercise. Uh, will you will have like also all the access to the content of this tonight's webinar? But Julio will explain that to you uh, at the end. Um, then we are just going to explain a little bit the format of the workshop. 
So it's so after I'm gonna finish uh, talking, don't worry, it won't be too long. <laughs> the workshop will start, and then it's one hour and 15 minute lecture. I really recommend you guys to be focused on what the teacher says because it's really important. It's 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 live, so it's really good. And as I said, you will uh, be you will be able to have access to uh, the content. So try to listen Julio as much as possible. And then when you have question and you feel like you really want to ask a question, use the question tab. Um, and so yeah, it's really important to use uh, to just listen during the the workshop. Um, yeah, after the lecture, you will be invited on the platform uh, Learn. And then, as I say, Julio will show you the exercise, the correction. So again, at the end of the lecture, it's not the end of the workshop. You will have access to a lot more. So just be focused on, uh, on Julio's explanation, and then you will be able to complete uh, what you want to do after that. And also, really, really important uh, for us, uh, it's to give us a feedback at the end. Uh, that would be really, really great because uh, it will help you to uh, like get better or to have a feedback to know like if something was wrong or or if you really like it. Also, you can say be nice. <laughs> now it's nice to have feedback to know uh, what to improve or what to just like continue uh, as we was just doing. Um, okay, um, enough uh, talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry for learn the platform. It will be at the end of the lecture. So don't ask during the, the workshop. It's at the end. I will share that with you. Uh, now I'm going to just uh, let the team uh, introduce themselves and, uh, and then after that we can start. Okay, so I think we can start with uh, Julio and then the girls uh, go uh, as you want. Hello everyone. So my name is Julio. I did my batch um, number 222 in London, the beginning of last year. So I came to the wagon because I needed some skills to like make prototypes. Like I, I like I have many ideas and this, and I had no no idea how to do it. I was working with some devs, and I saw that they could, and I said, okay, I need these skills. So I did my wagon. I worked for a pro as a product manager for almost a year. And then I decided to quit in December to create my company. So I've been doing that. And at the same time, I'm a part-time teacher at the Wagon. And I discovered that I, I really like teaching. Hi, everyone. I'm Emma. So I worked as a product manager and as a data analyst for a couple of years after finishing uni. Um, and both those jobs kind of put me really close to the other engineers. And I realized that I had massive job envy for what they did. So I decided to do boot camp six months, um, and since then I've been working as a junior developer. Definitely recommend. Hi guys, my name is Anne. I'm French as well. Uh, and lately also in a, as a customer manager in a software company, which got me a bit closer to to the tech industry. Uh, but I've always found my work a bit uh, repetitive, and also I felt like I've stopped learning at some point in my job and I felt a bit bored. So I quit as well last uh, December. Uh, and I was sometime working with developers, so I thought they had really a good job. So, so I really wanted to do this coding bootcamp. And now I got truly addicted to coding and I'm sure I want to work in coding later. And I'm, I now I keep learning every day and building things. So that's really great, recommend it. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Lucy. Um, I just finished the batch in London um, in March. And before that, I was actually living in France and I was working for the New York Times in advertising. And my job was to build the, the ad units. So for this job, I worked with developers on a daily basis. And like Emma, I was also really jealous of their skills. So um, having worked with them for a year and a bit, I decided to quit and, and learn the skills myself. So that's when I, that's when I joined the wagon in January. Um, and then since then, um, like Anne, I've been working on projects and also um, TAing the, the full-time batch now. And um, yeah, it's really, really amazing. It's really addictive. So if you're hesitant, definitely do it. Great. Thank you so much, everyone. 
Uh, that's great. I think we can start, we can kick off now. So basically the girls and me are going to disappear and Julio is going to be uh, on stage and Julio is going to explain uh, everything now and like go into the, the lecture and the girl will be back up and respond to your question uh, if you need it. Okay, so I think we all good now. And uh, yeah, we can start the, the session. So see you later. Awesome. So welcome again and good evening. So I'll be using the following tools. I will be flipping between um, my, let me just start sharing my screen. Okay. So I'll be using Chrome where I'll be introducing the Learn Wagon platform, then some slides, and later I will just turn to my desktop and I will use two more tools that I will show you in a moment. Okay, so, um, well, let's start. Development Sprint, we're going to code a website. You'll see, uh, I'll, I'll walk you through the steps to do this thing. And then uh, at the end, you'll have all the tools to actually build a website of your own, which is really cool. So here, first of all, welcome class. And let's see what is what we're going to build. So in the learn platform that you'll receive a link afterwards then you'll have a couple of things so you'll have these four tabs then you're going to have access to the web development website uh, sprint and here is the objective of tonight right so this is the website we are going to have here um, change your life learn to code and then some things like you can see a button here maybe <clears throat> uh, another section and then some little cards with images right so let's see. First of all, we have to see or, or understand how a website is working. All right. So whenever we have a website and we, are, we want to access a website, we type a URL, right? We type it here on, the, on any browser. And then what happens? We get the result, right? But how is this thing happening on the back end? So here you have your computer. Let's call it client. It's a user ourselves. We type a URL, HTTP, and then the address. And then it's going to be, um, this address is stored somewhere, right? Normally it's in a server. So in this case, when we make a call from our computer to the server, we, we make that call using the URL. And we get back a package with a file. Normally this file is coming in a format that is HTML, all right? It gets to our computer and it gets rendered. When I say render, it's just like this, it gets displayed in the screen, just like this. But for this to happen, there are some things that we actually need um, to, to make this possible. So there are some tools that we devs use to make this process um, what is happening. So first of all, we have Sublime, which is a text editor. You can see it very much like Word. So when you have a HTML file, you edit this in Sublime. It will be the equivalent of having uh, Microsoft Word and then here uh, dot doc, all right? The next thing is that we need a browser. We need a tool to render and that can interpret all the content of this HTML file. And the last thing, we need a server. In this case, we are going to use GitHub. So in the beginning, in, sorry, in, the, in the last part of the, of the challenge that you'll have in the Learn platform, you'll see a challenge that uh, you can actually push your website to GitHub, right? So it's a it's a server that it's storing static websites. Okay. So let's make this recap, and then don't worry because you'll have on the Learn platform the links and the instructions to actually download these tools and replicate this. All right. So first we set Sublime just to edit some text. We can write our code. It has some features that you will see that it can highlight. Uh, I can show different colors just to make it very much uh, like visual. Looks like this. We have Chrome, we need a browser. In this case, we'll use Chrome because it has some tools for developers that are very useful. You, you'll see why. And of course, the hosting service, right? So we'll just push and have the website online with this beautiful logo. So first, um, just let's, let's go back to learn. Here, what you'll find is uh, in your turn, in the first section, 
so it, it's divided like this, right? You have four sections. You have lecture, your turn, takeaways, and thank you. Lecture is where you, you'll find the instructions. So this is what we'll be building and an explanation of what are the things. A video, which you'll, you'll find this afterwards. The slides, which I'll be showing here. And uh, they, they are just um, like, okay, the indication is the little icon here, right? So the second thing will be your turn where you'll have all the sections that we'll cover throughout this webinar. Um, then you'll have the section takeaways, which I'll explain later what it is, and the thank you. Okay, so now we're going to go to uh, your turn getting started. And the first thing we're going to do is to download the boilerplate. Okay, so we have done Google Chrome, uh, Sublime, and now we're going to click just here. So we're going to get this zip file, and we are going to open here um, the download tab, we are going to double click, it will extract it, and we'll just move it to the desktop, all right? And I'll suggest you to change the name, just to call it landing, something like this, right? So we're going to use Sublime, as I said, we're just going to call it here. And the only thing you need to do is to drag and drop this folder into Sublime, just like this. All right, and we'll have access to the files that we have set in the day in the boilerplate for you. And what we have here is um, a folder that contains one more folder called images. So here you see that there are just some images. Here you have a HTML file and a .css file. So I will go later and explain what is these things. Right, but you'll have this. And the second thing that you should do is. Uh, in your browser that I had one minimized here, you just drag and drop once again the index HTML, right, this one, uh, into uh, the browser, right? So now we, we will have linked, basically, our HTML file and our Chrome. And you can see here something like this. If I type here something like hello class, and I say this, and I reload this, We'll have it here okay so everything is linked now we have the sublime on the left on the right we'll have the browser and this is how we'll be uh, playing tonight all right so let's go back to our slides so up to here remember that every every um section i'll just make this a small recap of where to find the things it will be here on learn and remember if you have any questions just uh, type them on the question tab on the on the live stream okay so let's uh, let's continue. So now that we have a, we have our tools, let's just start learning about uh, actual website, right? So let's just start with the HTML. So any web page is structured with uh, two main things, two main languages. Let's say one is the HTML, which is a language that allows us to store uh, content and structure. And another one, which is the CSS, that allows allows us to play with design. Okay. Um, so first, let's go for the HTML, which is this: the content and the structure. All right. So let's see, and let's flip to our Sublime. I'm going to make this a bit larger, so it looks very much like this, right? So it's the dot HTML, and it's composed of two things. Uh, sorry. Of, Couple of things. So here, here, let's learn about the basic syntax of how it looks. So everything that you'll find in a HTML file is composed about elements, and we are going to call them tags. Normally, they will have an opening tag on the left, some content inside, and a closing tag on the right. And the opening and closing tags will contain the same name, in this case, element. There's an extra feature that we can add which is a property that is called attributes. And we're going to name it ATTR, and we're going to pass a value, right? Here, we're closing it as well. And here we have some content, okay? So to give you an example of how this actually looks, we're going to look at this. So the A tag is uh, making reference to a link. The link will be Le Wagon, that's the name of it, and the property, which is href in this case, it's a link to the wagon website. So let's say that when we click on this link, we'll get 
uh, sent to this uh, where this value is pointing. All right. Good. So now let's see how the skeleton of a HTML file looks. And all the HTML files, they look exactly the same, right? So they contain the declaration of what type of document is it, which is like this. Then they have opening and closing tags to indicate that, yes, it is indeed a HTML, the head and the body, all right? Now, it's very important to know that the head will contain all the intelligence, all the metadata of the website. I'll explain in a moment what is metadata. But everything that is related to intelligence will go inside the head, okay? Everything that will be displayed, all that has to do with content, will be um, inside the body, okay? So let's just take a um, look at example here. So here we have the declaration of, okay, it's a HTML. We have these tabs. And then here we have the head with some intelligence. And then here, the body, which is just the content. And just very much like I did here, H1, that's why it was able to render it here, okay? So let's let's see um, now what what is metadata that I was talking about. So everything that is in the head is just the intelligence, all right? So if we go to a website, like if we search on Google something like coding bootcamp blue wagon, and we get here um, the the first organic result. So here we have change your life, learn to code. So this is not by chance that is happening, right? It's not Google just saying, okay, uh, this is the wagon, I'm going to render this thing. So actually what it ha what is happening is that if I open the file, if I open the website, sorry, and I inspect, so I go to the page source, with the right click, I will see this thing, all right? So this is just the landing page of the wagon, right? All the code, everything is contained here. Here you can see that you have the doc type, HTML tag, and head tag. And here you have the meta description, and it's change your life, learn to code. So it's actually matching what we have here. So meta tag is used to add some intelligence to a website and to communicate with other websites as well, right? So here in this case, we're telling, hey, uh, Google, whenever you're going to render me, type this thing in my description. If you want to communicate with Twitter or with Facebook, Whenever you share a file, for example, in WhatsApp, you say, hey, share this file, you get a nice image and a small description of this. And you, you have here, um, like also some description on the top. All these things are contained within the meta tags, okay? So that's why they are very important. We, also, we always have to, to have this thing. But what gets rendered is of course, only what is inside the body, okay? So let's uh, explore this thing a bit. So we have the head, as I said. So then we have the title. Uh, it's one of the properties. Then we have the description that we just saw in the browser a moment ago. And then we have this UTF-8. Uh, so this means um, that whenever there are accents, so for example, in, uh, in Spanish, in French, we have some accents. So then, yeah, you have to add this thing for it to be able to render it properly. Now let's go to see some more um, tags on our on our website, right? On, on what we were going to build. And these are called headers. So here you saw that in Sublime, I type H1, and then we got something. And it was a specific uh, font size, that something it was by default. So it's because we have different type of headers. So we have H1, H2, H3, H4, and actually we have up to H6. We normally don't use more than three, but well, just by convention, but of course, these, these, these ones like a, a H4 to 6 are available if you want to, to use them. Um, okay. So there's also the next tab, uh, the next tag that it's called paragraph, right? It's just a P. So every tag that we have, once again, we have um, an opening tag and a closing tag. And here we can type something like uh, coding a website. We save this thing, and if we render it, it's here, right? So it's creating this specific font size because we have a P tag, all right? Um, we can also say uh, we can we can make some things bold inside uh, a P tag. So for example, we just add the strong uh, tag, and then we'll have 
this part, like this, what is contained within the strong tags, it will become bold. We have also lists, right? Lists are very important. If we want to display like, uh, let's say, a menu or some cards or something like this, we might have to, to resort to, to lists. And we have two types, UL, which is an on order list. And when I say on order, all the list items will be displayed in bullet points, right? So here it's like I'm making my, my shopping list for tomorrow, bread, milk, butter, which is containing an on order list and it will be displayed with these bullet points. I also have the ordered list which is just OL. So as you see, there's also a logical relationship between the names and what they mean, right? So OL, order list, UL, on order list. And in this case, we'll have three countries and we're just going to have them like um, one, two, and three. That's the difference. One is bullet points, one is numbers, okay? And then we have images. Um, this one is a bit particular because it has an opening tag here, IMG, it's have these little signs. Then it has a source. It, it will point somewhere and we'll sh I'll show you in a moment how you actually create this one. It has an alt, which is the description of what, when, when you get into a website and for a reason the, the image is not loading, you get the alt. So this is just to describe what it, what should be there. So it's for accessibility purposes. And the characteristic of this image is like um, image tag is the so you don't have a closing tag in this case. You just open IMG and that's it. Okay, so now, now that we have learned about the headers and about all the tags that we can use, let's start uh, seeing in our website, the one that we are, and let's transform this into content, all right? So this is what we want. We want, um, let's, let's divide it into sections, all right? And, and Let's say that this one, it's section one. This will be section two, the Discover Our Campuses. And then this one will be section three. So let's let's start building some things here. So we want first to remove this and let's start. Here, it could be something like a cage one, right? Change your life, learn to code. So we're going to start doing this. Change your life, learn uh, to code. And then we want something like maybe a H3, just to see something like this. So it will be Le Wagon brings, Le Wagon brings technical uh, skill, technical skills to creative people, right? So then we just have this to creative people. And then we're going to add this, which is like a button in HTML, we are going to use the A tag, which is a link, right? And it will point to HTTP uh, S uh, wagon.com And we are going to do something like um, apply now, for example. Right? If we save this thing, and we go here. So now we have the first section done, right? So we have change your life, learn to code in a H1. Here we decided that it's a H3. We can have, we could have decided it's a P or it's a H2. Later we'll, we'll pass to the styling. And here we have the button apply now. So let's continue. Now in our second section, we have here, so this actually, we can pass it, um, will be called the banner section, let's say. This one will be just the cards. So here we want um, maybe a H2 which will be, so one, one interesting shortcut that I'm using, uh, you might have noticed, is that when I type H2 and I just do tab, it auto-completes. So this is one of the reasons that we use tools like Sublime, right? Because then there are many shortcuts that we that we could use, in this case is just this one, and it will auto-complete. And so then, yeah, this cover uh, our campus, uh, our campus, campus. Like this and then what do we have so we have three things that they look very very much alike all right so we have um shanghai london and paris we have an image we have some other uh title here and then a description so let's try to replicate this thing 
So it will be something like we have an image. And then the way that we are going to call this thing is uh, in the following way. So we have to communicate within our folder, right? So that's why we drag and drop the landing folder into Sublime. Because here we have images and here we have what we need. So we're going to say in the images folder, look for specifically the same name that we need. So if we want to start with uh, Shanghai and we have to do this, and the extension, we have to be really careful that it's the same, right? In this case, it's like this one, shanghai.jpg. And then we can just say Shanghai, right? So let's uh, do this one. And then we want maybe another title um, to cover for the city, which will be this, Shanghai. And then we want a P tag. This one, we're going to say, learn to code with us, learn code with us in Shanghai. All right, so let's see what we're getting. If we go uh, here and if we refresh, so every time I'm refreshing, you can either do here or just do command R in Mac, and then you'll get uh, every change that you have uh, typed on your, on your text editor, you'll get it rendered here. So now here we have our uh, our title, and then here we have what looks like a card. So now what we can do is say, hey, you know what? This looks good. So let's do it three times, all right? Here we copy this and we copy it again. And now we just have to change, right? So here we want to change this for uh, Paris. And here we want to change this for Paris. So once again, you, you notice that I'm using shortcuts, okay? So if I click on a word and I do command D, command D, I will select as many times as words are there. So if I change here, London, and then here I also do the same thing, London, and then I go back to our Chrome and I refresh this, I'll get them here. So let's make this one larger, right? So here you have the first section. Now here you have the second section with the three cards look good later we will style them okay and then we have the last section which looks like this all right so then this one uh, in the footer section we can add something like maybe api and we can say website made with lots of uh, and then we can use once again another shortcut command control um, spacebar to get to the emojis and we are doing it with lots of love for you <laughs> um, at the wagon. All right. So then if we save this one and we refresh this, here we have it. All right. So now we have we have everything we need that um, is the content of our website. So we actually have something now. It doesn't look that good, but we'll, we'll cover that. OK. So um, remember that everything will be uh, on the Learn platform here, right? So at this point, we are in section two, HTML content. So you'll have access to this, no worries. Uh, you'll receive a link afterwards, and you'll get this, OK? Um, now let's continue. So we've done, we've done the first part. And we said that any website, it's, it's structured with uh, two types of, of languages, right? So one is the one that is the content and structure. We have covered this. And now we have the design, which is CSS, all right? And what is this thing doing? So let's, let's have a look, OK? So first of all, we have to link a style sheet. So everything in coding is very logical. And as you can see here in our so in our text editor, we have uh, all our files and just very much in the same way that we connected the image tag with the folder images and then the name of the file, we're going to do something very similar with the style sheet. So here in the style.css, we're going to type all the CSS thing, um, properties that we want to render and we are going to link them using this. It will be, it's, it's a link tag that it's inside the head because it's intelligence for the website, all right? 
So it's just here, if we remove this, then it won't understand that there's something uh, related to this. So let's let's make an example of this, of what I'm saying. So let's go to Medium. So if it, Medium is a beautiful website and it has lots of interesting content and it's, it's nice, right? So it looks good if we scroll, looks very nice. If I am to go, and this is one of the reasons we use Chrome, we have an inspector, right? And this is a developer tool. If I just click, it's right click anywhere on the website and just click inspect, I get access to this part, right? So what I will do is that here you can see that it, it's just following exactly the same um, thing, the same um, structure that we're having, right? So it's a HTML file, it has a head and it has a body. So if I remove the intelligence of this website, it looks like this, all right? So it's exactly the same website, it's just medium.com, it's live, it's the one that you can access. It's just that I remove all the intelligence, I remove all the styling of this. So you can see that well, everything is here, right? It's just that there's no style. And actually this looks very much like this, okay? So let's, I, I did nothing to a website. If you do command R and it's here, you load it normally. So it's just a tool that we can use to actually change things or test things. This becomes very handy when you're uh, developing your website, you can do the inspector and make the changes here. Then you do the changes on the, on the text editor. They are not saved if you do it directly on the Chrome. Um, okay, so yeah, that's to link a style sheet. Here you have the head. Uh, you have this this link tag with this href, so it's within the website. That's why we're just doing it like this and with that .css. And this is a file, all right? So how how the file looks like? So it looks it, there's also a relationship between the tags and the tag structure in HTML and the tags that are, we are going to declare in our CSS file. Okay, so how do they look? Okay, yeah, we did this example. And now let's let's pass to the syntax. So we will have our selector, right? And in this case, the selector will be either H1 or P or image or whatever we want. Okay, so as long as it's a HTML selector. And inside, we're going to declare a property that has a value, right? So we'll, we'll see in a moment what is this. And we can declare as many properties as we want. So in this case, if we want to target a H2, and we want to make that H2 color red, and then we want to do a font size 24, then we can do it. And it's something like this. So if we go to our style sheet and we say, um, what is the first thing we have? I think we have a H1, right? So we can just check here, H1. So we can say something like this, you know, H1 color red. We say this thing, we refresh and we just change the color of the H1, okay? So we can change as many things as we want, font size, font weight, and so on and so on, okay? So let's see what are the things that we can actually change. So we can we, we will start with colors. So here you have just color red and background color yellow, so it's different. Here I'm targeting the font, like the actual uh, characters. If I do background color, I will be targeting what is behind, okay? And there are four ways to define a color in CSS. The first one is just to name it, orange. This one will be um, a bit too shiny and all this palette will be a bit too shiny like that. Then we have this code that every color that we can come across will share this code. And we can use tools to come up with, uh, like to find what colors uh, are there. For example, I use one that is called zip that I will show uh, in a moment on how you can pick any color that you see here and then you'll get it, you'll get this code. Then you have RGB. RGB stands for red, green and blue and it's um, a range of numbers from zero to 255. Okay, so it's red uh, here, green and blue and then the fourth way to declare colors in, in CSS will be RGBA, which is very much like RGB. It's just that it has one additional parameter, which is A. A stands for opacity. It goes from zero to one. And then you'll see in a moment also what is the, the, the nuances that this will provide on a color. All these four, they will render exactly the same thing. 
this orange. Now let's go to the gray scale. So when we when we design websites, we use uh, not many colors, and we use lots of gray scales or gray scaling. And then this thing that we learned, the RGB, uh, it's very, very useful. If we just say 0, 0, 0, it will be black. If we do 255, 255, 255, it will be pure white. And all the things in between, as long as we repeat the same number three times, it will be all the scales that we have. So this is a dark gray. You probably cannot see it that much, but believe me, it's a very dark gray. And this is a very light gray, right? So it's very close to white, but it's still uh, it's still a shade. So then this is super, super useful when designing websites. Font family. So we can use as many fonts as we want. So there are many tools that we can just um, find. Google Fonts we'll use in a moment that we can just say uh, which type of, of font we would like to render. So here you have the ones that you have probably seen many times. So you have times with serif serif is just the little things that are um next to the to, in, in the end of the a and in the b like you have some some curves here and so that means serif so you have the sans serif like arial and they just make it look very very different and then you have like the monospace like this one so these ones are built in but then if you want to have something more interesting like more design wise then you have to import a font but you can also change this on on your css then you have the font size and spacing. Mm, for example, if you want just to make the, the font larger or smaller, you'll do this, font size. The line height, if you want to give more spacing, like make your, make your document breathe a bit, then you, you will add some line height and it will make it look better. And the layer spacing. So let's say that you have a title or something that you would like to very much highlight and you have the correct design. If you provide some spacing, it, will, it, it could look very, very good. And the font weight. So we, we will use two things. One is between 100 and 900, and it will just go from the lightest um, font to the boldest font, right? We can also say, you know, lighter or bold, and that's it. And it will also um, respond to this. Now, the, one, the, the 100 to 900, you'll see in Google Fonts how we can actually import specifically a type of font that we want. OK. And now we have the last uh, CSS property, which is decoration and alignment. So we could say something like, when we declare a link, by default, it will be um, underlined. So if we want to remove that property, and actually we can take a look, our link which we defined here, apply now to the wagon. Here we have a, a, a link, uh, it's underlined, right? It doesn't look great. So we can just remove that with uh, none. And then, of course, where we want to place our text, the center, left, right, justified, we can do whatever we want. So then we have the property text justify, and we will pass center, right, left, justify, and it will do uh, this trick, okay? So now we have created our HTML structure. We have something that has been rendered on Chrome. So now let's start adding some CSS uh, uh, properties to, to our website, okay? So let's start with um, one example. So let's, one, one design trick that I will give you is that you always go from the general to the very specific, right? So when I mean, uh, what, what I mean by this is that you want to first, let's say, let change uh, the font uh, type of all the document. You might want to change the background color of everything. And then if you want a specific design, then you'll, you'll go um, with other type of tools that we'll see doing this, right? So we start from the general things and then go to specific. And by this, we can do something like, let's, let's leave the color just because it will be like, good to, to visualize what is happening. So let's start with the body. When I declare here the body, it will actually tag, uh, it, it will be referenced to everything, right? So everything that is contained within the body will take these properties. So if I am to do something like font family, and I do courier, as an example, and if I refresh this, everything has changed, right? So here, this is courier, this is courier, everything has changed to courier. 
So remember Courier times Arial, they are built in. If we want specific things, then we want to, we need to import them. So let's just do some styling, uh, like basic one. Let's say that our font size will be 18 pixels. Then we can say that, um, let's, let's remove this margin, for example, here that we have next between the change and the, the start of, the, of Chrome. There's like some margin. So we can do margin zero pixels. So let's see these two changes, what has happened. Okay, so there's no margin. Then the font is slightly larger. Of course, it's different from the different uh, selectors. And then one thing that is um, maybe also a good trick is that the background color of the website, you normally don't want it 100% white. It's just like it's visually it's better when it's, it's a slightly like a, a very light gray. So then you do RGB, RGB. And then you can do something like 230, 230, 230. This thing. And then it changed a bit. So you, you, I think, yeah, you, you can see this one. It's not white anymore. It's just like this light gray. Um, and then that's when we start using all the shades, right? So then this is this is very good. Um, and then also the, the font, we normally don't do it pure black. So then we just do color RGB. And then we'll do something like 30, 30, 30. And it will be a dark gray. I'm going to refresh this and it changed. I know that you might not have noticed, but uh, believe me, <laughs> it changed a bit, okay? To, to this like that dark gray. So using white and, and, and dark, like these extremes, we normally don't do it on website design. We have like these uh, nuances on it, okay? So let's let's do something about the colors. Um, so in my case, I have, as I said, let me just make this one a bit larger. So here I have a tool that it's called SIP, which is this, this tool, SIP, that I normally use to look for colors, right? So I will activate it, um, let's say here. So let's say that we want to replicate this blue, right? If, if we want exactly this blue, then I'll just have to go here and then activate this. And I get a tool that I can hover over any part of the website and I'll just get the code of the of the color. So if I want this blue, I just go to this and it's palatinate blue with that code. It has been saved. So I can just say, um, you know what? I want this blue in maybe the apply now. So in my A tag, I want some color. And it will be this color, right? So let's see how it will look. So yeah, it changed, right? And one other thing that we can do just right now is to change the text decoration to none. And then we're going to get rid of that underlined thing, okay? Um, so now, what, what if we let's let's go to um, the fonts, okay? Let's do something with the fonts. So if you go to Google Fonts, here you'll have access to n number of fonts, right? So you can just here search whatever you want. You can filter by serif, sans serif, and many other type. Then in this case, let's use two that um, are good. So this one, Chivo, and we just look for this one, it's here. So if we click on it, we'll have access to the, the numbers that I was talking before, between 100 and 900. So let's say that we want maybe the 300, and we want the 700. And then you can see here on the right hand side that we have like a shopping cart, right? Review and an embed, something like this. So before going somewhere else, let's get another font, which will be overpass. This is the one. And then we'll import maybe the 100. And then we can import the 200 and the 400 regular one. So when you want to use fonts, as I said, that it was part of the CSS, you have to embed them, right? So you have here on the right-hand side, this link, and it will say to embed a font, copy the code into your head, right? Of your HTML. So we are going to just say, okay, this link that we have here, we copy this, we go to our HTML file, and in the index, we copy this, right? So here we had something like only two uh, fonts declared. So we can just uh, 
paste this one, all right? So this is what we need. And then now we have access to uh, Chivo and Overpass in all these different uh, sizes, okay? So now they are actually available. If we save this and we go here, at this point, nothing will change because in the style, we still have font family as Korean. So now what we do is just follow this part, CSS rules to specific families. So if we want something specific, let's say that we want um, all, the, all the headers, the H to be overpassed, then we'll copy this. And then we're going to say, you know what? I don't, I want the H1 to be font family like this. So let's see how it looks like. If I refresh this, it has changed, right? So I have targeted the H1 and the rest of the, of the font is staying the same. So let's say that I want the H2 to do the same thing. Uh, I will do this. But of course, I am repeating myself, right? The file will understand, right? This has changed. But this is one of the things that developers, we don't want to do. We don't want to repeat. So there's a, an acronym that we use that is DRY. Don't repeat yourself. And one of the things that we can do, it's um, just say, you know, H1 and H2. We are targeting both things at the same time, and they will do the same thing, right? When we save this, we refresh, and then it's doing the same thing, right? So the color has changed, the font family has changed. Now we can probably get rid of the color because it doesn't look good. Okay. And the other family that we imported, we can leave it for the rest. Okay, so we can say in the body, we change it to Chivo. Uh, and now we have the two fonts that we want, and they look very much like what we have here, right? Start, it's starting to look a bit more like this. So let's uh, let's continue. There's just one more thing that I'll show you that I, I find very, very interesting and very useful. So when we're in websites, we want to make it uh, dynamic. So if you do something like this, a zero class, you declare this thing, and you change the color of an object to red, for example, then you'll get, um, when you hover on the link, you'll get it red, all right? So this is this is something that it's quite nice. So there are many things on CSS that you could use to make your, your website very, very uh, attractive. Okay, now let's pass to the div structure. So this is very important because then we are going to, to pass to advanced design, right? So, so far, we just have a uh, very basic design, like it just looks like this. Not much is happening. So now websites are built using the div structure. And what is the div structure? Is the following. So whenever you enter to any website, for example, this is Airbnb, you'll have boxes. You are not seeing them, but when you go to the inspector, you will you will do it. So here you have one div. Here you have another div, which is it's, it's containing all the apartments. This one is containing a map. This one is containing each of the individual apartments, and so on and so on, right? So we will we will use this div um, property to, to separate the sections of our website, okay? And there are some properties that we, that we are going to use. So first of all is the width and the height. You can declare this, let's say you want 300 pixels. So normally um, a screen has like 1,400 pixels on the width, um, just to give you an idea of what is the size. Then the height, let's say, is can be like this. It's measured in pixels. There are other measures, but the one that is most common is this one, width and height. Then you have margin and padding. Okay, so margin, it has to do with the external space between the content of the element and its border, right? So here you have external space and the padding is the internal space. We'll make an, ex uh, um, an example in a moment, okay? So margin and padding, they are different. They provide some air and, and they, they make the document breathe, but in a different way. One is external, one is internal. Then you have the border. You have to declare it like how many pixels you want the border to be um, here. Then you, if you want it solid, you can, it can be dashed, it can be dotted. There are many properties. And then the color, we pass yellow here, any other color. 
and the border radius. So when you notice, if, for example, in Airbnb or in, in some cards, like you will see in some websites, they don't have sharp corners. They have like these little rounded corners. So then we pass border radius and it's better for the eye, right? It's, it's one of the tools that we use as designers. And um, border radius can, can also create from squares. If you have a square and then you say border radius 150. So let's say that the square image is 300 times 300. You declare a border radius of 150 and you'll, you'll have a, circle, a circular image. So this is very much used like in your avatars for Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, all these things. Then you'll have, you'll have this property here. Um, and then, yeah, of course, you can just use, use border radius 50%. It will do the same thing, but it won't rely on pixels. You rely on, on a percentage, which is good. Then you have box shadow, right? So you can declare like the vertical shift, the horizontal shift, and then how much you want it to exceed the, the element and the color of the shadow. This is also very good for styling. And um, well, this, these are our properties of the divs, right? So let's let's design our website. Let's adapt it to divs. So in this case, we said that we have three um, parts, right, of, of our website. So first of all, let's just go here once again. Let's go to our HTML, which is where we declare the divs, and we are going to to do it here. So first, let's let's identify the sections. Here, we can say that it's one section. Here is the other section, and here's the third one. So let's divide it like that. So first we are going to do our banner. So we are going to declare it like this, div, and then we are going to put all the elements within inside. And then we are going to like that in. And then we have a div that is containing the banner section. So actually let's move banner here. And then we know that we're referring to this. In the second thing will be this one, right? So we have kind of a, of a hidden div here, it's difficult to see uh, in the beginning because this div is containing the cards, right? So one is containing the cards and the other one is containing everything within this second section, including um, the, the H2 discover our campuses. And there's one more that is for each of the cards. So we should do something like this. Here we have a div. And then we're going to put everything inside, right? All of it. And then we're going to move just this on top, just to make it very, very visible. And then we have a div that it's encircling the cards, right? So then we're going to make this one another div. And then we're going to move our cards inside. And then we have one div for each of the cards, right? So we're going to create one more div here. And as you see, one of the things that I'm doing is that I'm inventing. And this is this is um, life changing for, for coders. If you don't indent, then you'll get lost in your code and then it's, it's not good. So remember that one indent. So here we have the last div. And we are going to move this one inside. And we have we have done this, perfect. And the last thing is our footer, right? So we want to uh, do it here, div. And we're going to move our p tag inside, okay? So now we say this thing. So we have, it, it's a bit more clear. Well, actually it's much more clear. We just move the footer here. So now we know what we're referring to, right? So we have three main sections, the banner, the cards, and the footer. And within the cards, we have, um, major section containing cards and then we have a small div containing each of the cards if i go to uh, this part to our website and if i refresh nothing happens but it's okay because at least like this has been done the the the, um, the division with with the div tag it's it has been recognized by this now we can pass to advanced design all right now that we can target things so let's go here. So just remember, everything will be on the learn platform. So here we are on the div structure number four. You'll have this. Um, you'll have access to this later. So don't worry. It will, everything will be here. All the instructions, all the documents. Okay. There's also a section where you you can see like well here on the takeaways. I'll cover in a moment. But everything is here. 
Um, okay, so now let's pass for ID and class. What are these two things? So now we have seen that whenever we target um, with a selector, so we use H1 or H3, it will target everything, right? So if I am to do something like in my style, div, do something, it will affect all the divs that are within the website. And the, we don't want this thing. So we have to come up with a way to identify each of the sections that we want, right? So let's see how this, this can be done. Uh, yeah. So there are two, two uh, keywords that we are going to use, right? One is ID and the other one is class. So imagine that we have an on order list. It has items, which are the uh, images of the Beatles, each of the members of the Beatles, Paul, Ringo, John, George. And we have um, one of the images. So we want to style the images, right? So if we do image with 100 pixels, I will target the image of the logo and all these images, everything. And this is not the best thing that we, because we, we might not want to make a width 100 for everything. Maybe we just want this for the, the Beatles images rather than the logo. So then we won't do this thing. We are going to use IDs, okay? So IDs have a property to be unique, right? So if we want to make specific adjustments into elements of our HTML, we use IDs and we declare them like this, ID equals to something. So it's an attribute that we are using inside our tags. And the way to identify them on the CSS file is with a hashtag, okay? So then if I say logo with 100 pixels, I will only change the logo instead of changing all the images. So these images will stay the same. And the second thing is that if I, if I want something that I will reuse, I will use a class, right? And they have to be very, very uh, explanatory. So I will here use class. Once again, it's just the same concept. We're having it inside the image tag. We're going to name them image circle. And in the CSS, we're going to call them with a dot, right? Dot image circle. So remember, ID is a hashtag and it's for unique adjustments. And a class, it's uh, for reusable design and it's identified with a dot. Okay. Yeah, this is the one that we want. So we can use both. We can use IDs, we can use classes. And it's very important to remember that. Um, IDs is for unique adjust adjustments and classes for reusable designs. Okay. So one of the of the things, like the more you develop, the more you realize that you you always want to um, let's say make the, the less effort because of course coding requires uh, it's it's lots of logic. So you'll see that if you reduce the strain like, on, on the effort, you can actually gain many things. So that's why 90% of the design that you will do will be based on classes. And then when you really want something specific, like IDs, then you'll use this, but it's, it's not that much likely. So classes are the things that you will actually use more and more, okay? So um, one, one important thing is the naming convention. So when you define classes, you want them to be very, very specific and self-explanatory. When you develop code, you want the user to interact with the code, right? But you also want other developers to look at your code and see what is going on. And to make this process simple and faster for your fellow coders, when you want to debug, that's the way we use, the, the word we use, you want to be self-explanatory. Like the, the document has to be auto-explanatory, self-explanatory. So the, the naming is very important. If you're going to name um, all, the, all the classes and the IDs, you want to do something like, the type of um, of element you're targeting and the action that this is doing. So if you create um, text center, then you'll automatically know you and the other coders that this is just centering the text. So if you see button red, it doesn't matter. You're not looking at the website. You know that this class is targeting a button and it's turning it red, right? So the first thing, the same thing, sorry, with list in line. So you have a list of bullet points 
you want to inline this thing. So it means that you want to, instead of having um, vertical, you want to horizontal, for example. Um, then image circle, just like the example with the avatar, you want to add, for example, some border radius and do it a circle. And then form horizontal. This is just another example. Okay. So let's design and let's add some classes to our website. So let's let's use these ones. Okay. Let's see. Let's go to our website. And here, let's see what is what we want. So this one, we can call it a banner. This one, we can call it a button blue. And then for this one, we'll use a specific keyword, which is container, right? Because as you see, we, we want to, to have some specific margin on the left and on the right. And we'll just containerize this uh, uh, piece of, um, let's say, tags, right? Then we are going to have one for the cards. We can just call it cards. And one more for each of them, the cards. And the footer. So let's transform this into code. So here we said that the first one is going to be class banner. Then the second section will be class container. Then the cards will be something like uh, cards in plural container. And then each of the cards, we are going to repeat this one. Uh, class, it will be card white. They will be white. And Let's say that the last one will be um, just the class footer, okay? Of course, this one is not entirely following the convention. It's not like card wide, but it's just that it's a footer, so it will it will just, um, like this is, is good enough. So if we save this thing and then we reload, once again, nothing is happening, but now we can target individually the, um, the files, right? uh, sorry, the, the sections, all right? So let's pass to this one. Um, let's style it now. So let's start with the button. Okay, so we have it here. And I think that will be the, the most interesting in the beginning. So let's do the convention that we decided. So it's btn blue. So this is the way that we declared it here. Uh, actually, that, that's the one that I was missing. <laughs> so here you have class and btn blue. All right. So now this one. It's here, and we can start by doing something like background color. And we could use the tool that I showed you earlier, just to say, okay, you know, I want this blue, and yeah, we had before. We just copy this one and add it here. And then we can say uh, maybe the property, well, we can, we can change the color to make it white. So let's see what are we getting so far. We do this. So now you can see that the background is is um, blue, then the color is white. If I hover, it's still red, right? So this property is still being read by the file. So let's just make this have some space. So what we need is to use some padding, right? So we said that this is the internal space. So if we pass something like 12 pixels and 16 pixels, and then we pass some border radius of, let's say, four pixels, using multiples of four, it's always good in design. So if we just do this, then we have a button. So you can see that it's uh, like it has some border radius and it has some internal space, right? So it's the padding. So now let's go with the background. So the background has an image, right? So let's start by adding our image. So if we select the banner, we can say, uh, I want a background image and it will require a URL. So this is the syntax, right? So once again, I'm going to target the images folder and I'm going to look for the background image, right? So it's background.jpg. If we save this thing and we do this, so the image is here, right? Something happened at least, okay? So now um, what we can do is start styling this uh, image, right? So we, there's a property that is called background size. Uh, background size. But if we say cover, it will actually do 
the following. So here you can see that you cannot, we cannot properly see what's going on with the image. It's like too large for the space we have. With this property, it's actually making it small, right? So you can see that the original image is like this. And now we have been able to actually like fit the computer, like the, this part that we are seeing inside the div that we have. Um, we can change the color of the text to white just to make it visible. And then we can say text uh, alignment, text align to the center. And this is what we can do. And then let's see how it looks. Okay, so it's starting to look interesting. So once again, we need some internal spacing, right? And remember that the internal spacing is padding. So we can add 100 pixels and I'm going to use this uh, syntax that I use here, what I didn't explain. So here, if I use only one value, it will be for the four sides, top, bottom, left, right. If I use two values like in this, it will be top, and this will be top and bottom, and this will be right and left. So here I want top and bottom, 100 pixels, and I want right and left, zero pixels. So. It's so starting to look more and more like what we want, right? So look, it's almost like that. So yeah, this is one of the things like it looks okay. Now we could target things that are inside, right? So like this, this one, it's still not looking like this, like there's like some opacity. And that here is where we are going to use actually this. So how do we target? So we have to say first, you know, inside the banner, target the H1, and let's change, let's do a font size, uh, maybe 40 pixels. And let's do the banner and the P. Let's do, let's change the opacity to 0 0.7. And then maybe the margin button, like, like you can see that it's, it's too close to the bottom, right? So then the margin bottom, we can change it to maybe 40 pixels. So if we refresh, then, um, yeah, we're having this thing. Okay. See this thing. We refresh and that's it. Okay. Um, now let's keep going. So here we have, um, ah, yeah, of course. Then we are going to continue with the cards, right? So let's start these ones, how they look now. Something like this. So we want to make them look a bit more like that. All right. So first of all, we have to target them. So we can start with card white. Um, and there's just one thing. Yes, of course, this one, let's just make one thing because it was not changing, right? So we were targeting H1, H1 is fine, uh, but we wanted, I wanted to target in this one, a H3, right? That, that's why I was not noticing something. Exactly, H3. So let's go back here. Just let's see if it changes now. Yes, perfect. Now is what we want. Here we have a H3, which it was not a P. So you can see that, for example, I have declared this as a P. And because I made that mistake, it was not being picked up. Now it was just a matter of seeing what was the correct selector, which was a H3. It's here. We targeted. And then, yeah, now it's changing. So then let's do the same with a uh, card white. Let's say something like. Well, let's start, right? Background color, uh, white, because the background is a light gray. Then we can add some box shadow, and then we can say uh, one pixel vertical shift, one pixel horizontal shift, one 10 pixels for the spacing, and then RGBA for uh, the color of the shadow, right? So zero, 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 and then the opacity. So let's see how this is starting to look. If I refresh, so now you can see that I have um, so something white here, it looks very, very large, but it's starting to get, to get there. Right. So we can add some padding, internal spacing of 18 pixels. Probably we can give some border radius, uh, that we can say maybe four pixels. Then we can add some margin, for example, in between the cards, maybe 20 pixels. So let's see what is this, what are these properties doing? So you can see that now you have some margin here. You have uh, the border radius. So it's interesting to see that now the three cards are changing the, like at the same time, right? 
And one more thing is that the width is too large, right? So then we can say maybe 200 pixels. Okay. So if we do this and then we just do text align center, and then we save and then we refresh. Now we have, well, something that looks more like a card. However, now the problem is the image, right? So look, we have um, an image that is overflowing and we don't want that thing. So now we have to target the image. So let's let's look just to avoid the previous mistake, like last time. We say, okay, card wide, fine, we have an image, perfect. So then we want to target the card uh, wide, and then we have an image. And inside, we are going to limit this with a width of let's say 180 pixels, and maybe the height of 180 pixels. So we want a squared image, and Let's uh, let's choose some border radius of four pixels as well, and let's see how it looks. Okay, so now we are fitting it inside the, the size of the card, but we have a problem. Like the, the image looks a bit weird. So this is because we need to add a property that is called object fit, and we have a value of cover, and this will stretch the picture to the correct size. So now you can see that it actually looks okay, right? So yeah, it looks much more like what we need. And the last thing uh, of this part will be to change the footer, right? So we want our footer in it's a class like this. So then we want our footer to have a background color of, so I don't know the color of this, so I will just use this tool. So this tool, um, it's just one of them. There are more tools that you could use like Color Hunter or there are just many more. You can just um, download them as Chrome extensions. So then, yeah, we get this color and then we pass it here. And then we might, well, let's see how it looks like, like now. If we refresh this, we get this. And it's a bit strange, right? It's just here. So then, once again, we are going to use uh, the property of padding, right? So if you can see this one is, is very, very useful. So we want top and bottom only, nothing on the sides. So that's why we can do like this. And we want to do the text align center. Okay. So then if we do this, we're getting this. Ah, maybe one more thing. Just change the color. So we do footer and we tag the P and we change the color to white. And if we go here, now it's white. Okay. So there is one more thing missing, which is how do we bring the cards like this? Okay. So the rest is is done like we have this thing now how do we tackle this last part so there there is um the following thing which is called the css grid all right so this is to build um grids as the name is saying in this fashion right so let's see how this looks so you have um a div that is called in this case cards and you transform it into a property that is called display grid. So when you do this, you have access to some other properties like grid template columns, and you can pass the fractions that you want to be rendered as cards. So in this case, it will be four, right? And there will be a grid gap of 16. So let's see how, how this look, how this will look in, in practice. So here we know that um, we have a container that we that it's encircling all the second section. Then we have uh, a cards container that it's encircling only the three cards and then the cards. So let's go for our cards container, uh, which is here, cards container. Yes, and then we are going to do display grid, right? And then we are going to use this property that is called grid template columns, and we're going to say one fr, one fr, one fr. We're going to say this thing and pass it here. And now we're going to have our cards in the in the order we want, right? So it's one, two, and three. And now we just need some. Um, we we can use our container, the one that we declare that it's wrapping everything, all the cards, and including the H2, and we can declare it above here container and we can do some margin 
And what is the margin we want? We want maybe, uh, I don't know, something like 40 top and bottom, and maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe some 60 left and right, something like this. So now, this is what is happening, right? So I'm getting um, my container with some uh, padding, um, uh, sorry, with some margin, uh, top and bottom, and left and right, OK? And then th this way, we're actually getting our cards, all right? So as you can see, using this property, the grid, uh, and then declaring the 1FR, 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 I'm getting what I need, all right? So let's just see. I think that, uh, yeah, so well, if you have more cards, more than three, in this case, for example, you have four fractions. If you were to have five cards, this property is very intelligent because it will just push the card to the next line. So in this case, uh, if you have, say, nine, then the ninth card will be here, all right? Um, okay, so when we did this part, Okay, good. So we have finished our website. So I think it looks very, very much like the one that we wanted. So that's very nice. So let's just make a, a small recap. So remember that we, we started by downloading a, bo a boilerplate, which you'll have access when using the Learn platform. So you'll receive this thing in a moment after, the, after our, our webinar is done in a mail. Then in the getting started, you have the first thing, which is the boilerplate. You'll just follow the steps, just unzipping the file, dragging it to Sublime, which is the tool that we will that we used through through the website uh, through the webinar, sorry. And then just the most important things, right? So the the HTML um, is conformed by head and body, and then the website is HTML plus, plus CSS. Everything that is inside the head, it's the intelligence. Everything that is inside the body is just the content. And the content is, uh, we are declaring it using the tags with opening and closing. There are the headers, the P's, the A's, and then we wrap them in divs, right? And each of the divs will allow us to do a specific design. So then, as you, as you saw here, everything is wrapped, and then we are going to be able to target in our CSS. And the CSS, it's um, if we have just a selector, then we use it without, we just declare it like that. And we go from general to the very specific. So we started with the body and then we went to the buttons, the banners, then we pass the images and having the, the divs and the containers allowed us to, to actually do very specific things. And remember there are some properties like padding and these that with the time you'll, you'll get uh, more and more comfortable. And then you can see that in, in hour and 20 minutes, we build a website. So this is one thing that you can do uh, like very, very fast after after this webinar, you'll have all the things in the Learn platform. And there are two more challenges that we haven't covered, which are very, very good, which number one is making it responsive. So whenever you want to do something responsive, it will be here. And then you can just take a look at the solution. It will be just here. You'll use media queries. Everything that I that I built, like we built together this, this evening, it's just here, like all the solution for the HTML, and then for the CSS, now you know how to leak this thing, you know how to use it. And then the last thing that you can use is um, the server, right? So in the beginning, I was talking about three tools, Sublime, Chrome, and GitHub. So then here you'll have an example of what is GitHub and why it's, it's super powerful. So it's uh, to control and to track all the changes that we made to code. We devs use it every day, several times a day. And you'll be able to push this thing, right? To push your website. So if you wanted to push this one, you'll be able to do it. And you'll have a URL and you can share it with your friends or whoever you want. So, okay, well, we've reached uh, the, the end of the webinar. So I think you liked it. Um, I'd enjoy it very much. And um, well, see you next time. And of course, thanks to uh, Celine, to Anouk, and to our wonderful TAs, uh, Emma, Lucy, and Anne.